Brave one, you have found your place in Photoshop. Many trials still await you as your place is not yet secured. Therefore, you must arm yourself and be skilled in combat. Most importantly, the brush. Choose a brush, learn to wield it wisely, then go forth and paint. The journey begins. Alright, let's begin our weapons training. So to follow along with this, you can download the worksheet. I'll have the link in the description. So once you've got that open, select the brush. The default hotkey is B. Or you can select it from the tools palette. Then open your brush palette. If you don't already have it available in your workspace, go up to window, brush, and there it is. So I won't go too far into all the details of the brush palette. I'll leave that up to your own experimentation, but we'll look at some of the more important parts. So we can change the size. The default hotkey to change the size up and down is left or right square bracket. We can also change things like the spacing. Spacing will affect how Photoshop lays down each stroke or how how far apart it's laying down each stroke. So you'll see with the wider spacing, it's more dotty, whereas the more narrow spacing will make a more solid mark. Another important feature of the uh, brush settings is transfer, also known as other dynamics in previous to CS5 versions. So we can change how the opacity is affected by the uh, stylus pen pressure. So to begin making the custom brush, I've gone to brush presets, gone to the top right drop down menu and selected basic brushes. Now you'll see you have a whole range of brushes here. I'm going to choose this chalky looking brush. And I'm going to draw a brush mark that's going to help make our brush for drawing fur. The fur brush will come in handy when painting our bore. So I've made this little brush mark here. Control click that layer. You do want to have it on a separate layer just to make the selection easier. And edit, define brush preset and I'll call it fur. Now I'll just uh, delete that mark. Now we're gonna adjust the uh, settings just to make it how we want it. So at the moment it's looking pretty good. I think what we're gonna need is transfer, the spacing all the way down, bit of shape dynamics to pen pressure so the size is affected by how hard we push and probably angle jitter by direction and that's looking pretty good I reckon so happy with that and let's save that so we go to the little drop down menu here new brush preset and that will have saved the different settings we've applied here. Now if you want to save the color or the flow you can do that in the tool presets so let's go ahead and open the tool presets window tool presets and we just go to the top right menu there new tool preset give it a name there and we can make it include the color. The thing I like about the tool presets menu is it complements your brushes and it gives you a really nice list and saves more options than simply saving as a brush preset. Alright, our next weapon of choice is the eraser tool. 
The eraser tool is very similar to our brush tool, except of course it's taking away pixels rather than applying them. So you'll see I made a mark with the brush, now I've changed to the eraser with E or the eraser icon on the tools palette. So you can see it's just taking away those pixels as I brush. Now you'll notice the brush tip shapes haven't changed from brush and eraser since they both use the same available brush presets. Alright, so the next weapon we're looking at is a smudge tool. I'll set it to hotkey S or you can choose it from the tools palette. It looks like a pointed finger. So now we've got that selected. Once again, we have the same brush presets and brush tips available. Now, one of the cool things about the smudge tool is the ability to smudge things. And when we play with the settings, we can actually create things that can make the uh, paint look like it's bleeding, like watercolor, or can scatter it. So I'll show you some of the ones I've set up. So if we set up a scattering, make it scatter, maybe make the hardness lower, and you can see it's doing some really cool effects there. So you can experiment with that all you like, with different brush tips and all that, and you can get some really cool effects. You can also adjust the strength of it up here. So obviously more strength is going to make it smudge more, less strength is less smudging. Alright, so just before we get into the last part of our quest, we're going to look at blending. So blending is using the eyedropper, which we select by holding Alt with the brush tool selected. And we can actually use that to pick any color on the canvas. So I'm just going to paint a small splodge of the purple here. Choose this blue. And then lightly paint over that. And you'll see, because it's uh, come out at about 50% opacity over the top, when I select that colour, it's now a mixture of both colours. So depending on what result you want, you can keep blending and get a smoother transition or a rougher transition if you want a more painterly feel. Alright, so that covers that. Let's get into painting our bore and that'll complete our quest. Alright, now the fun part. So we're going to sketch a wild bore just to apply the techniques and understand them a bit better. So I've got a bit of reference down here of some wild boars and we're going to draw them. So just going to choose a colour. I'll talk more about uh, picking colour in the next video. But for now, uh, you can choose colour just from this square here. Uh, I've actually mapped it to a hotkey, so that makes it a bit easier. Alright, so just for the drawing, I'll just start with like a grey. Thinking about the big shapes rather than all the details. You can just draw the silhouette of the animal. Maybe an easier way of working. But as you'll quickly learn, there's tons of ways to do different things in Photoshop. And it really just depends on the result you're going for. 
you know, how much time you want to spend, all that sort of thing. Generally, the way I work is similar to this, so I'll draw a sketch layer and then refine that sketch layer, so add a bit more detail or correct anything. And then from there, add a bit of color and value and then just noodle away at it, rendering. Alright, so it's not the best sketch, but I'll just run with that. Now I'll create a new layer. I'll drop the opacity on my previous drawing layer. So the opacity control is in the layers palette. You can slide it by actually clicking the opacity word. Slide down or up or you can click the little drop down or just manually type it in. Okay, I'm going to draw a cleaner layer now on a new layer. Taking a bit more time this time. Okay, now that we've got a basic drawing down, just put in some uh, basic values and colors, and then we can blend them, and then any final rendering just to finish it off. So let's do that. So on a new layer, I'm gonna be working underneath my sketch layer, so I'll just drag it underneath that. Little thing about the layers palette is anything lower in the list is behind. Anything higher in the list will be on top. So working with the kind of mid-grey at the moment. Let's make it easier to judge my light and darks. Using the hop keys to change brush size. Okay, now we can add some light and shadow. So we can just use this darker outline for the shadow. If you go outside the lines, just switch to your eraser and rub it out.
you have earned your quest reward. The Brush of Brilliance. We must not dwell on our victory for our next quest awaits. The Power of Light.